pardon? Who is it? Shuttleworth Residency. Oh, John, it's Ken. Oh, sorry, Ken. Uh, I haven't spoken to anyone for about an hour. Mm. So there was a frog in my throat. Yes. What can I do for you, sir? Well, um, firstly, are you well? Yes, I am, Ken. Um, well, <clears throat> I'm certainly a lot happier now I've found my slippers. Uh, your slippers? Yeah, because I lost them. Oh. My wife will tell you. Mm. I was, for a time, murder to live with. Mm. I'd be moping around the house in stocking feet. Mm. Didn't know what to do with myself. But now, I look forward to my evenings. Well... And, um, what about yourself, Ken? I've been very busy, John, on your behalf. Oh. As your sole agent, I've been negotiating a contract with the BBC for a brand new radio series with you as the host. Oh. Now, um, Ken. in fact, it started already, John, because I've got the tape recorder. Oh. And uh, it's on... Is it playing record? You press. Yeah? Yeah, no, that's what I press. That's right, yeah. So, you know, come on over, John. I will, Ken. It's happening. Oh, fantastic. We present John Shuttleworth's Open Mind. This week, UFOs. Clever. <laughs> yeah. I'd yeah. say that's a superior organ that's generated those sounds. Yes. It was produced by a lad from Yule Grieve called Toby. Oh. Who's got a MIDI studio. I see. And he's struggling a little bit, but mm. I keep throwing him a crust oh. whenever I can. Yeah. That's nice if he can. Anyway, sit down, John. Yeah. Thank you. Are you still recording? Yes, I am. Yeah. Oh. Hey. That's right. You've yep. set the levels correctly. Mm. Yes. Now, look. You need to be briefed. Oh, right. Read this. Hey. <clears throat> it's on official BBC notepaper. And it says, Dear Mr Shuttleworth, over the next five weeks, you will be investigating unexplained phenomena. And at the end of each programme, drawing your own conclusions based on the evidence gathered. Yeah. As a former security guard, yeah, which of course I was, Ken, wasn't I? Mm. From the sweet factory. Oh, yes. In the Rotherham area. Mm. Yeah. You will be expected to utilise your highly developed investigative... 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 Mm. Oh, how do you say it, Ken? Investigative... Oh, Oof. no, it's tricky. It is. Uh, something powers, mm. anyway. Investigate. Oh. Finally, we do request that throughout mm. each investigation you retain an open mind. Yeah. Oh, right. and your petrol receipts. Oh, fantastic. They're going to pay me petrol money, Ken. Mm. Is that what it means? Yes. Oh. oh, yes. You're a good agent, Ken. Well, you know. He's a good agent, listener. Oh. Is Ken Worthington. Give over, John. <laughs> Give over. Oh, can't believe it. I'm very excited, Ken. Good. And I promise I'll do my utmost mm. to retain an open mind. Mm. You must, John. Yep. Now, the first thing <gasps> that we need to oh. do is... Sorry to interrupt, Ken. I've just realised something. What? It'd be much better if we did the investigation tomorrow. Why? Eh? Well, Mary, my wife, mm. is having a, a makeover party uh, this evening. A makeover party? And I've got to be on hand no. to bring down the chairs from upstairs. That's my main job. Also, tidying up, um, mm. folding napkins. Oh, no, no. No, John, I'm sorry, but what? if you're going to put domestic duties like that in front of a series on national radio, then forget it. Oof. And the BBC will be of the same view as well. Mm. They'll be thinking, why didn't we get Michael Burke? And you can forget about the petrol money as well. Oh, no, because that won't materialise. Oh, well, you just can't be doing that, John. You've got to, a certain degree of professionalism is necessary. Yes. Be guided by me, please. All right, Ken. Now, yeah. this week's topic of investigation is UFOs. Ooh. So I want you to ring up a UFO expert right. who will give you a grounding in the subject. Who's Sir, that, then? Sir Patrick Moore. <gasps> That's right, the famous astronomer. Yeah. How um, did you get his number? Well, Ken? I've got all the star's numbers in my mobile, John. Have you? Ken's now scrolling through his address book. We've got Anita Harris. Oh. Oh, Keith Harris. Huh. What about Orville? Have you got his number, Ken? <laughs> <laughs> Very funny. Oh, Leo Sayer, I see. 
So um, here we are. M for more. Ooh. Patrick Moore. Right. Give him a call. Yeah. And um, while you're doing that, John, I'm going to change into something more suitable for UFO investigation. Oh, I wonder what that is. Oh, it's ringing. I'll put Gens Mobile close to the mic and then you can listen in. Can you hear that? Hello. Oh, hello, is that uh, Patrick Moore? Yes, yeah. <clears throat> well, I beg your pardon, it's Sir Patrick now, isn't it? Because uh, you were knighted recently for your services. Uh, <laughs> no, I think I should be, but... No. Yeah. Hang on, that, that I'm, not, I'm not actually at the moment, no. <laughs> Have I got the wrong number? Um, Is that uh, Patrick Moore, the famous astronomer? Yes, yes. Ah, uh, no. What was um, uh, I am... <laughs> I'm the mower. M-O-W-E-R. Oh, of course, it's Patrick Moore, the famous actor. Well, uh, uh, infamous. Um, well, I think of you as famous, Patrick. Uh, star of uh, Target, Callan. Yeah, yeah. Special Branch. Yes. And I believe you're on uh, Chuckle Vision, weren't you, once? I, I have been on Chuckle Vision. <gasps> what, what, who, sorry, who am I talking yes, to? Yes, beg your pardon. Um, my name's John Shuttleworth, um, and I'm doing a show uh, for the Snooty Station, Radio 4. Oh. Uh, it's called um, John Shuttleworth's Open Mind. But, I'm, I mean, I, Patrick Moore is, is uh, I'm afraid, I'm, I am not he. Well, it might not matter, Patrick, um, uh, depending on how knowledgeable you are on uh, UFOs. Do you know much about UFOs? Because um, we're doing that this week. Oh, right. I, well, I, I know a bit, a little bit. Yeah, what? Oh, tell uh, us. What do you know, Patrick? Yeah, well, I know UFO stands for Unidentified Flying Objects, but... Um, yes, I think we know that, too, Patrick. Uh, but I don't know whether I believe in them or not. No. <clears throat> Weren't you uh, Cadbury's Milk Tray Man at one time? Uh no, I, I was oh. nearly. Well, not nearly him. I was nearly James Bond, but that oh. might be what you're confusing me. Is it? Well, I, think you'd <laughs> I used to do the voice for. Um, uh, they came in search of paradise, and they found the bounty bar. <sighs> I was all those sort of voice man. Really, yeah. I've suddenly gone off you, Patrick. Do you know why? Why? Because bounty. They got rid of the cardboard strip. Did they really? Yes. Well, have you not bought a bounty recently? No. There's no cardboard strip. Oh, really? To I protect didn't... the delicate coconut. John! Oh, yeah. uh, who are you talking to? Never you mind. <clears throat> Give us a phone, John. Oh, oh no. Hello? Don't Do snatch, have... Who's that? Oh. Hello? Is that not Sir Patrick Moore? No. Uh, no, I'm Ken. afraid not. I, I, um... <coughs> I'm the other one. I'm, I'm the, the more common a garden mower. Patrick mm. Moore. Yeah. This is Ken Worthington. Oh. I do beg your pardon that we've uh, screwed up. Must be Linda Nolan gave me the wrong number. Ah. Oh. Well, actually, she might have given you the right number, because I know Linda. Do you? Yeah. Hey, you're quite well connected, aren't you? Yeah, well... He is. Um, I thought you were very good in Lovejoy, by the way. Uh, Jen. Well, uh, <coughs> yeah, Give us a phone. Yeah, that, that was a very Ow. good friend of mine, Ian McShane. Oh, John! Uh, not, not me. Uh, <sighs> Sorry, Patrick. Oh. Sorry about that. Hurt me wrist. Yeah. Very rude of Ken to snatch the receiver. Is he available me. for yeah. representation? Um, <sighs> Patrick! Now he's asking if you're available you? for representation. Yes. No, he's not, Ken. Oh, no. Well, are you? He might be, I don't know. Well, no, oh. well, I do I do, do strange things. Oh. Appearances, I mean. John, come on! Yeah, yeah Ken's reminding me that we really need to crack on oh, right. with the investigation. Yes. Okay. Um, actually, just a thought, Patrick. Yeah. Um, you've spent a lot of time in the countryside, in Emmerdale. Yes, I do. Uh, very often UFO visitations occur in rural areas. Do you yeah. never come out of the wool pack late at night and think you see? You see double. <laughs> oh, <laughs> why? Do you have? A, do you like a tipple? Uh, no, well, I, I only as much as. Oh, you're else. slurring your words now. Yeah, yes. no, yes. yeah. <laughs> right. Well, I think we better leave it there, Patrick. Ooh. Thanks very much. Bye. Uh, bye. 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 <laughs> My turn, John. Come on, you've had the binoculars for at least five minutes. Oh, all right, Ken, there you go. Thank you. Oh. Well, Ken, cranes his neck skyward. I should point out that he's wearing a floppy hat, um, as indeed am I. We're also both sporting long trench coats and long woolly scarves, which gives us the Doctor Who quality. Ideal for UFO investigation. 
John, I've seen a UFO. What? Oh no, no. Yeah. Sorry, John. No, it's all right, Ken. Easy mistake to make. <clears throat> of course, the marvellous thing is, by wearing this strange apparel, I'm able to move freely around Ken's garden without fear of my wife Mary detecting me. Because, you see, if she sees me, she's going to want me to come and uh, get the chairs down mm. uh, for the yes. makeover party. That's right. And that could hamper the investigation. Yes, it would, then. Oh, blimey, she's coming. <gasps> oh. Afternoon, Ken. <gasps> oh! Hello, Mary. <laughs> what are you doing with them binoculars? Don't be not being a peeping Tom. Oh, no, I'm not, Mary. Oh, good. <laughs> Mary, it's me, John. Yes, I know, love. Yeah. Yep. Just thought you might not recognise me, love. Oh, did you? In, in my disguise. <laughs> but, anyway, <clears throat> um, just to let you know, Mary, yep. as soon as the investigation's completed, I'll be home to help get things ready for the makeover party. Mm. Well, to be honest, love... I'd prefer it if you stayed where you are and had your tea at Ken's house. Oh. You know, because I have a lot to do and, uh What about the chairs, Mary? Darren can get them down. Don't worry, John. You enjoy yourself. <sighs> yes. Anyway, huh? I'd better get on. Yeah. See you later. Y mm. Bye, Mary. Blimey. Hey, that's fantastic news, John. Is it? Well, yes. The investigation can continue unhindered by... Domestic intrusions. Mm. <laughs> yeah, but what we're going to do about a tea, Ken? Well, it's... You know, I was not expecting a hot meal, but mm. I was hoping for a sandwich wrapped in cling film with the side salad. Mm. And it looks like now we're going to have to try and rustle something up in your bachelor kitchen, Ken. Mm. Well, You, know, yes, you don't we... have a family-sized microwave. You... No, I don't. Your tap's a bit stiff, isn't it? Oh, I mean, John, what do you say? Well... Look, we're supposed to be doing this investigation... On UFOs. I know, and all you can think of is your stomach. Well, you know, you, you can't keep prevaricating like this. We've got mm. a whole series of investigations to do, and you must knuckle down. Yeah. Or Michael Burke will he'll be on standby, John. Oof. Ready for next week. Right. I'm sorry, right. John. Mm. You're right. Yes. But I'm just a bit upset that um, Mary doesn't seem to need me to get the chairs down. Mm. I John. mean, the slicing of the celery, you know, anyone can do that. Mm. But... That's my job, getting the chairs down. It always has been. Mm. I know, John. Tell you what, why don't you now perform that song that you've written about aliens? Ooh. I'm sure the ladies and gentlemen <gasps> would like to hear it. Yes, and of course I've got my organ with built-in auto accompaniment in the garden. You have? In case inspiration strikes. Mm. So, oop, yeah, we're on battery mode. Mm. And while you're performing the song, John, I'll go back on UFO watch. Yep, good idea. See you in a while, Ken. Yes, all right, Ken. This has got a few spooky sounds, but shouldn't be too frightening. If anybody's out there, show your face. If you have a face to show, it's possible I know that really you are just a blob of slime. But whatever your complexion, you're welcome anytime. If anybody's out there, say hello If you have a voice to speak, it might be just a beep But we will do our best to understand you If you want to park your spaceship on my lawn Well, you can do Though, obviously, I'd prefer it if you didn't Because you could discolour the grass Oh, are you already here among us? Sheltering in static Or hiding in numbers? You know, they could be the last three digits in the security code on your credit card Or they could be in your computer masquerading as a virus If anybody's out there, show your face If you have a face to show It's possible, I know That really you are just a blob of slime In which case, on reflection Please give the earth 
a wide berth. I'm sorry, but slime is dirty. Mary would have a fit, you know. Oh, blimey, I've just seen a UFO. Like a silver spaceship, it just flew across the sky. The shape was very like um, an aluminium curry tray. You know, like you get to, for a takeaway. Hey, come here. Uh, oh, that's what it was. Oh. Yeah, I thought it might have been, but I wanted to keep an open mind. That's better. As you can probably hear, Ken Worthington has uh, retrieved it because uh, he's emptying his bin. There's a bit of a breeze. Oh. Yep. Hello. Any ET sightings, Ken? No, no, nothing, John. Mm. That's why I thought I'd empty my bin while I was waiting for you to finish your song. Yeah. But um, I think we're more likely to see something after dusk. Yeah. Well, it's getting dark already, Ken. Mm. Mary's put on the lights in the lounge, I notice. Mm. The ladies are beginning to arrive en masse. Oh, Joan Chitty is doing the Macarena dance in the bay window, yeah. Ken. Never mind her, John. Come on, concentrate on the investigation. Yeah, sorry, It's Ken. time now. For Ken's Computer Corner. Oh, right. Of course, we've written a jingle for this, Ken, mm. which should precede the item. Can I play it now on, on the organ? Yes, yes. But I haven't written any words, Ken. Don't worry, John. I have. All right, well, I'll play the chords. Yes. And you sing the tune, Ken. Yes, all right, John. Here it comes. Ken's Computer Corner for internet advice. On vampires, ghosts and UFOs, just click on Kenny's mice. <laughs> what did you say just then? Kenny's mice? Mm. Don't you mean Kenny's mouse? Well, no, because I've got two of them, John. Though one of them's broken, so it's back in the drawer. Oh, I see. Sounds a bit funny. I but, know. Um, yes. Anyway, welcome to Ken's Computer Corner. This week, Ken has... You've printed out a nice picture mm. showing an alien with a big head. Yes. And look, looking a bit frightened. It does, yes. <laughs> yeah. Remember, this is radio, Ken. You know, we need uh, facts and figures. Yes, well, I have one here, John. Oh. It's a quote from Edgar Mitchell, who was an Apollo 14 astronaut and the sixth man to walk on the moon. Oh. He said, Yes, there have been ET visitations. There have been crashed craft. There have been material and bodies recovered. Hey. That's quite interesting. It is, Ken. But, you know. What? Some people would say it's a load of rubbish. <laughs> You Wouldn't know. they? Where's the evidence, Ken? Well... Where's the evidence of these aliens? It's, it's not here. John, in your garden. What's happened to your open mind? Well, we're getting to the stage in the investigation <laughs> when I'd like some concrete evidence, mm. Ken. Well... Or I'm going to have to say that UFOs don't exist. <laughs> Blimey, what are you doing, Ken? <laughs> Ken's unbuttoned his trench coat and now he's lifting up his jumper <laughs> and his shirt. Uh, why aren't you wearing a vest, Ken? Never mind. But what are you doing? There. Look, John. What's that? That's your fat tummy, Ken. No, that faint mark there. An appendix scar? Ah, but is it an appendix <laughs> scar? Or is it the result of an operation carried out by aliens who had landed in a field... Yes. ...where I was camping mm. with friends in the early 70s? <sighs> I don't know, Ken. I'm... What makes you think they were aliens? Well, Did you see them? Were you conscious during the operation? No, no, but <coughs> when I woke up, yeah. um, my mandolin, I had a mandolin with a lovely rosewood back. Did you? And it was scorched, oh. which could have been heat from the engines of the spacecraft mm -hmm. as they set off again. Yes, you know I mean? it could be that, Ken, mm -hmm. or you might have fallen asleep by your campfire. Presumably oh. had a fire and a sing-along. Yes. And one too many Malibus. I've no doubt. Well, no. I'd love to believe your story, Ken. No. But I must have more proof before I can even begin to take it seriously. I'm sorry. No! Oof. No. Ken's just stormed off in a rage. His hands are clasped behind his back. He's marching up and down his patio. And with his hat on, he reminds me of Napoleon. Was it him? You know, the one who was always frowning. Oh, and now he's gone into his conservatory. Probably going to have an early Malibu. No, it's not so early now. Um, but, oh, well, if he's going to do that, I can go back to my house and get the chairs down. 
because I'm not happy about letting my son, Darren, do that. He'll probably get the wrong ones. While I'm gone, uh, you can listen to some Vox Pops, I believe they're called, that Ken Worthington recorded in the streets uh, of Sheffield a little bit earlier on. Oh, there's a jingle to precede this item as well. Um, oh, so I can remember it. Don't worry, Ken didn't write this one. Comment candidly to Ken if you can. Comment candidly to Ken. Say what you like into Ken's little mic. Comment candidly to Ken. Excuse me, do you believe in UFOs? Um, yes, I do. Why is that then? Um, just reading different articles and things and... You know, I just believe that, you know, we can't be the only people around and things. So, yeah, I believe there's something else out there. No. No, I don't at all. Uh, I don't think there's any such thing as extraterrestrials or UFOs, partly because there's no evidence for them as far as I can see, no scientific evidence for them. Never seen anything. Don't think I'd recognise it if I did. Well, yeah, that's the point. They might be here already but in a form of life we can't identify. Well, as long as they're doing no harm or damage, they can stay. <laughs> uh, not really. But, hey, they're cool. Well, um, kind of, because they have, like, they don't cornfields and stuff, so if, um, like, they um, have cornfields, they probably have UFOs. I don't know. Yeah, they're cool. <laughs> Never see one. Never met an alien. What mind, I don't think. No, not really. I can't not as I can remember in recent times anyway. Um, I never never saw UFOs in, never in my life. But do you retain an open mind? Of course, and I believe that we are not the, the only uh, way of living in this universe, that it's very small. On the stairs. Should have tried to carry three at once. That was very cocky of me. Oh, hello, Joan. Hello. It's uh, Joan Chitty, mm. uh, one of Mary's makeover guests. Mm. You having a good evening, Joan? Oh, I am, love. We're having a lovely time, John. Right. Lovely. Well, I'll just nip back up the stairs, Joan, so uh, you can get past me. You don't need to do that, lovey. I'll just breathe in. Yeah, well... That's still not going to create enough space to get past you, Joan. Oh, you cheeky blighter. <sighs> no, Joan, I mean, because I've got these chairs. I know, love. I'm only joking. Hey, don't look so worried. Well, it's partly, Joan, because I've been doing a show about UFOs. Have you? Uh, for the radio. Oh, yes. And you look a little bit like uh, an alien at the moment. You've Do I? got a white face. No, oh, that's my face pack. Uh, you've taken them out now, but you're... A slice of cucumber in each eye, mm. which look very strange. For me wrinkles. You're wearing a long gown, which gives you an E.T. quality. Does it? And finally, Joan, you've got strips of tin foil in your hair. I have, love, yes. Which makes you look like something from Star Trek. Highlights. I'm sorry? It's for me highlights, John. Oh, I see. Now, shall I tell you what you look like, John? What, Joan? You look like a highwayman. Oh, yes, I suppose I would do. Mm. I'm still wearing my floppy hat and, and my trench coat. Let me get past you, John. Oof, well... Breathe in, John. Ooh. Ooh. There's not room, John. There is. Ooh. Ooh. Ken, will you shut up? Oh, look, Ken, be quiet. What are you doing? I'm trying to play Close Encounters, you know. Da, 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 on the clarinet. Well, don't, because Mary is applying a spray tan to Doreen Melody. Mm. It's putting her off. Oh, Ken, oh. I can't get the umbra show right. Good. I need to attract the aliens, John. Oh. They might need to return to carry out another operation. Oh, be quiet, Ken. 
We've had enough of UFOs for one day. No. And why are you frying sausages in your garden? Well, you were quite rude earlier about my kitchen facilities. Mm. So I thought you might prefer a cowboy supper. Ooh. Stood on the primer stove, under the stars. Oh, I would, Ken, yes. But first, John, I must insist that you play... Da, 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 oh. ..on your organ. No, Ken. Oh, please, John, you're my only hope. Yeah, but I've no sheet music, Ken. You yes, know. but you've got a clarinet sound on your organ. I've mm. seen it, number 56. I'm sorry, Ken. The answer's no. Right. No sausages, then. Oh. Yeah, Ken's got me. I have. It's Hobson's choice. Mm -hmm. I'll have to play it. Oh, thank you, but John. After I've played this final song, Ken, because it's time to go. Oh, The right. investigation is over, and my mind is now closed. And your verdict on UFOs? Case unproven. Ooh. I'll leave you with a song in praise of my wife Mary's cooking. Uh, she's the best cook I know. Though, having said that, those sausages smell lovely, Ken. Mm, they do, yes. Thanks to Patrick Mower for being my telephone guest. And to Linda Nolan for giving me his number. That's right. Join us next week when we'll be investigating ghosts. Ooh. My wife Mary made a lovely shepherd's pie and peas With carrots and gravy, oh, and cabbage as an additional green I said that looks fantastic, love, and I tucked in hungrily my daughter Karen did not, something I wish I had seen. For soon my plate was empty, I said, Mary, is there any more? She said, no, love, but it's treacle sponge for afters. And I said, four. I'd had a couple of mouthfuls when I heard Karen declare, I can't eat any more of this shepherd's pie, Mum. Well, it filled me with despair Cos you better know that I'd have had it, you know But I can't go back to savoury now That shepherd's pie was stunning But I'm halfway through me pudding I can't go back to savoury now Oh, no My taste buds would go crazy I can't go back to savoury now Cos you can't, can you? Thanks for listening Bye John Shuttleworth's Open Mind was written and performed by Graham Fellows with additional material by Dean Wilkinson Producer was Dawn Ellis <laughs>